Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Ain't no thing like me, Seth Lee. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. Matt's coming. No. When do we start? Happy New Year, you listeners. Hey, 2019, <laughs> New Year. Old you. I know. I'm just, You're still so sterly. Still just a craggly old man. We're back. We took a week off. People were mostly accepting of it. I think they thought the week the break was longer than it was gonna be. No, it was it was just, you know, well really got, it's two weeks in between I, shows. I got called out. They're like, when's Did it you? coming back? Like, Next week. Yeah, we, we <laughs> a couple we got some messages and some emails and whatnot. Wow. Yeah. I was surprised. I was so like, people, oh. people missed us. Like, oh, you actually paid it. It's cool. Yeah, no, we're, oh, we're wow. it's only a week. We'll be back. Well, it's really now we are. two weeks in between shows. Because you, know, you had the week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you, it was nice though. Yeah. Well, the only... I was over here more in between shows than I am <laughs> normally between shows. I have uh, the end of the year is like my busiest working week because not only do I have to do all my normal stuff, I have to go through and count inventory for taxes, which is, means every single piece by hand. I'm not even quite done. I'm almost done, but it is time consuming. And so if I went in there and started buying things, would this screw things up for you? No. Or if I started moving things around? No, I have a pretty detailed list. Oh, okay. <laughs> not really. Is it in your hen scratch? Yeah, I mean, no one else is going to know what's going on. Oh, okay. So it's like, you have to have like a Rosetta but, Stone. But if I get audited, I can tell them what it is. Oh, so you, you're like one of those people like, oh, that's exactly what that means. Like, is that what it should mean? Or is that what it does mean? I can walk you through the steps. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's because a process you're real, to the madness. You're real high on the IRS's priority list. That's, I, I would feel weird if I got audited and be like, why? What small amount of money do you think I've been tucking away? Maybe, well, you could be a skimmer. No, everything's legit. Uh, good for you. If, hey, if there are mistakes on there, they are just dumb mistakes that I made. Well, I mean, it's pos- that's why they audit people. Sometimes people just make dumb mistakes. Yeah, if, if it would be that. Well, that's why I have an accountant. Oh, good point. Do you like your accountant? <laughs> yeah, she's fine. As far as I know, she does her job. Well, you haven't been audited yet. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. There you go. Good for you. But we're back. It's that annual tradition we do. We'll be doing our end of the year awards. I think you named them the Eddies last year. The Eddies, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true or not. I, somebody named them the Eddies. I don't think it was me. I think I wanted to call it something ridiculous. You were like, I hate it. Just call it something I can't remember simple. what you wanted to yeah, call it. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm not going to The Zacks. It definitely wasn't that. But before we do that, as we do each and every week, we're going to go through all the pop culture news, the comics, the movies, the television. And to be honest, there's not that much because it was, you know, the holidays. So not a ton of release news wise, but we'll do it. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. First up, this one's not a surprise. You know how Marvel is getting Fantastic Four and the X-Men? Yes. Well, it turns out they're going to be developing those movies. Ooh. <laughs> which isn't news really the only thing that is the actual hair of news that there is going to be doing it um at least starting to develop them in early 2019 yeah which probably just means take a pitch meeting they'll meet with people see what they have yeah exploratory committees they'll be like okay here's our plan for the fantastic four not terrible They're like you're hired oh good <laughs> like, that's an interesting take we haven't tried that yet Oh, wow. <laughs> they're going to be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. No, they can't say that that last movie we watched. That was terrible. Where they're so embarrassed that it's called The Fantastic Four, they couldn't even say the name. No. What a crappy movie. It was not a good movie. <laughs> Hated that movie. I didn't like it. But yeah, so not real news, but you know, it's it's a coming. You know you want it, you know you love it. It's Star Wars. It's always Star Wars, because we can't get away from Star Wars ever. No. Episode 9, this, this coming Christmas. Yeah, well, at least we got a little bit of a break. 12 months. But yeah, fine. I'll do episode nine news. I was going to do Star Wars TV news first. Oh, no, 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 do the TV news. Everybody's favorite IG88 is going to be in the Mandalorian show. He was one of the bounty hunters. He was, oh. the, he was the robot one. Oh, okay. It's one of those characters whose name was never said on screen, but everyone seems to know what it is. I didn't. Like there's Bosk. He was the lizard one. Oh, I liked him. He was cool. He didn't wear shoes. Well, you know, his, his feet weren't made for shoes. How many lizards have you seen wearing shoes? I guarantee you there's a ton of them on the internet. I'm not going to Google lizards wearing shoes because I feel like that's going to only end poorly. But it looks like they're going to be leaning into some of these other uh, bounty hunters that were briefly seen and have some weird amount of Star Wars history within the fandoms. What did you say? IG-88. IG-88, yes. This guy, he's an empire for like three seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I totally recognize him. I could pick him out of a lineup. (laughs) They're like, tell us this droid designation. You're like, BB-2, I don't know. (laughs) 
Uh, our R two C three eighteen. But whatever, I'm fine with that. He didn't do anything, but he has a weird amount of Star Wars love within that fan base. You know, what I never want to be associated with obnoxious fans. I was like, just fan bases. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like I never want to be associated with a group. I'm sure most people are always fine, but there's always that that loud weirdo contingency. I'm like, yeah, nope. I'm just gonna be over here doing my own thing. Like Rick and Morty fans hate them. I know you do. That's why I brought it up. Is like, that a fan base you want to be about? Like the show. Totally forgot to write that down on TV shows I watched this year. I think that was this year. Might have been last. Oh, okay. It was a short TV list. And I, forgot I didn't watch any one. TV shows. But Star Wars Episode Nine news is that this story is going to be set one year after Episode Eight ends. Hmm. That gives gives leeway for Leia to not be alive anymore. I mean, she's going to be in it. They've yeah, already, that's true. Yeah, she is. They've already established. I don't know how much she's going to be. I'm kind of bummed out by that because I'm sure that just means by the time that this movie comes around, they'll have rebuilt the Resistance somewhat. And I think it'd be more interesting to have like the twelve people that were left have to do something. Yeah. But I'm sure by the time they come back, there'll be you know unknown number of forces. Who knows? Yeah, I mean that. So I was like, ah, I'd almost rather have it pick up sooner rather than later. Luke's Force Ghost. He's gonna show up. He's in the cast. It's not even a secret. Yeah, he's in it. Yeah, you need to have the Force Ghost. I need some Obi Wan Force Ghost and some Qui Gon Force Ghost. Give me that Liam Neeson baby. Let's go. He did the one of the animated shows. I I don't remember which. It must have been Clone Wars. Uh, probably. I don't. I didn't watch these ever, so my knowledge, but I know like, oh, Liam Neeson did come back to do a voice a couple of times. I love Liam Neeson. He was in, I told you I watched um, Daddy's Home 2. Is that on your list? Uh, no, because it didn't come out in 2018. Oh, uh, didn't it? It came okay. out in 2017, I think. But there's a, a movie, it was called Slay Ride. It was like an action movie that they went to yeah. see, but you never see it. But it's S-L-A-Y. Didn't we just talk about this? Yeah, but I still think it was funny. because you hear in real life, Liam, I can't remember. Yeah, Liam Neeson goes, Merry Christmas, assholes. I was like. Kind yep. of like, I like it. Yeah, like the one in Scrooge, like the night the reindeer died or whatever <laughs> it's called. Yeah, it's, oh my, <laughs> I didn't see Scrooge this year. Is it too late to watch it? You can really watch it whenever. I guess I you could, I don't really but care. It's no, like, no one's going to come and gone. you. It's a solid movie. I, I don't know. I mean, Star Wars, I hope, I mean, they said it after Solo kind of bombed that they were going to be slowing Star Wars way down. I hope we get a break after episode nine. That'd be nice. Do you think they're going to finally wrap up the whole Skywalker saga in that? They have to within that movie i don't think that matters to wrapping up star wars in any way shape or form no but i mean you always associate star wars with having a skywalker in it and the force and the lightsabers we'll just do something different it'll be the end of that because i mean mark hamill he, he can only play a ghost of himself for so long it's true they just ferment him at the end of that you know, i did <laughs> my favorite things vain luke skywalker <laughs> he has to come back i'm gonna force project myself <laughs> with better younger hair. better hair and darker hair <laughs> i like it you know if you're gonna force project yourself do you want to force project your best self right Not like weird island hobo you want you want to have your best self out there i would think you know svelte man you just went to the barber recently compared to a skinned up a little skinny up a little bit compared to a floating hobo on a, it's what he, he was yeah he was kind of a just he was levitating and he looks like a hobo yeah but a trim hobo hellboy the reboot series had its first trailer and well, no one seemed to like the trailer i didn't hate it that's yeah, kind of where i'm at my only thing with it is because they went into the saying like this is going to be a darker one that's closer in tone with the comics and that trailer just looks like the rod and perlman ones again I love. I just miss Ron Perlman. I like Ron Perlman as Hellboy. Those are both solid movies. Ron Perlman is a good actor. I like the second one. He's a one great better. actor, actually. Second one's really good. I haven't seen it in like ten years, but you know, from what I remember, I like the second one more because the first one had a POV character, and I usually hate those. They just work it into like in Doom dialogue. when they do the whole POV sequence. I mean, a POV character, not a POV shot. Oh point of view character like your entry point and like the wide-eyed person who goes around is like what's all this like ellen page and in inception like that's your pov character oh you're uh your character responsible for exhibit exhibit uh, you know what i'm saying exposition. exposition yeah the one who will just go and be like what's this and yeah it's just a lazy way to write a story yeah to be like oh well if we have someone who doesn't know what the world is we could just talk at them mm, good point but i like the hellboy the second one didn't have that the first one had it i forget the guy's but name. i like how in uh, the austin powers movies they make fun of yeah, the whole Basil concept exposition. Basil exposition i don't know i mean i 
I think it looks okay. It looks pretty generic. A lot of the monsters look just like, yeah, there's a big CG monster. I want it to be good. But something, I mean, I like those with the Del Toro ones is most of those monsters, not the big ones, but those mostly practical stuff. And I like that about his style. So I, I feel know. like it's a, it's going to be a red box candidate over a yeah, probably. scene theater candidate. Did Guardians of the Galaxy just ruin trailers for a while? With the music and the... Everything has to be kind of like a poppy, funny... Eh. Like, oh, remember that pop synth song from the 70s or 80s? Some good songs. Although, it wasn't just pop synth. They threw in some Fleetwood Mac. I mean, just in the trailers. Yeah. But no, there was Fleetwood Mac in the trailers, too. Uh, like, the last the last Guardians of the Galaxy trailer had the, the, the first, chain. The first one I remember had Hooked on a Feeling. Yeah. And I remember they had Fox on the Run, but they had other trailers, too, so I don't remember. Yeah, everything. no, Fleetwood Mac's The Chain was like on the last volume, too. And then, yeah, this one's Billy Idol's Money Money. Money Money. <laughs> Yes, my mistake. I forgot. Get it right. They dropped the E. Yes. But even that, that took me out of the trailer. Like, I kind of just like spaced out for the first few seconds. I was like, is that money, money? I totally. And then I came back. I was, and I was oblivious like, yeah, to it because you were like, I'm going to have this song stuck in my head. And I was like, why does he have that song stuck in his head? And now I can remember it was in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. See, I was swept up in the visuals on the trailer. You were looking at your phone half the time. Yeah, it was Hellboy. He's <laughs> red. He doesn't have horns. I noticed they had horns and a fiery crown. Yeah, that, to be fair, I that's the universe I tried to break into like 10-ish, 8, 10 years ago, but it's not really told in any kind of chronological sense, so they just have like a bunch of different miniseries that would just drop. And I tried. I tried, I don't know, I maybe read 30, 40 of like different issues, but I, just, I was never able to get fully into the world. Yeah. And now they're releasing them in like these nice hardcovers that have everything in chronological order. There's a spe- set timeline. I'm like, well, that would have been nice a while ago. Well, maybe I now. Tried, nah. New year, new you. Come on. I don't have that much time. Oh, come on. <laughs> you find time for the important things, Zachary. What else happened this week? Oh, um, the Holmes and Watson movie? It's supposed to be terrible. It's god-awful from what I've read. Like, people have left the movie theater and demanded refunds. I, I want to, like... I guess it's so bad, they tried to option it to Netflix, and Netflix said, no. And they take every single movie. Not, not only that, but, like, should have known there was, like, there were no... No reviews. They didn't let anybody see it until they released it. Yeah, it had like two percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's rough, which is because I mean those guys together. That's usually it's funny. usually like a slam dunk. Yeah, I mean there's this trend that's going on that people will be like, oh, it's sophomore humor, so that makes it bad. Which is like, I don't know why the internet decided they were going to be stuck up about certain things, but shut up. If it's funny, it's funny. I'm getting 2019 started off on a great note. It's true though. Like I like not everything has to be highbrow. Not everything should be. No. It should it should be arranged. But there seems to be like this thing on the internet now where people are like, well, this is below me. Shut up. <laughs> you said below me. Yes, I did. Is that what you're talking about? The sophomore humor. Jesus Christ. Amen. Is coming to DC Comics. Really? <laughs> so I just wanted to Good make it him. more of an explanation. Yeah, he's going to be a new superhero in DC in a mini series called Second Coming. Is whole- he? It's not going to be in the main DC universe. It's okay. going to be a Vertigo offshoot book. And basically it's going to be, how does Jesus deal with like coming back and trying to you know, enlighten people and save the earth when there's a guy, Sun Man, who's kind of this omnipotent, he's Superman, but they're just calling him Sun Man. Weird. And how does Jesus deal with that? And how do those two like conflicting things go together? How does the OG superhero deal with Superman? I, I don't know. You manifest <laughs> Whatever. some kryptonite. It's an interesting enough idea. I'm like, all right, I'll read it. Is Sun Man going to be the Antichrist? No, it's just Superman. Interesting. Uh, I don't know. I mean, good for Jesus. He's getting some. He's getting a comic book run. Disney and Netflix are really... I mean, Disney and Marvel are really serious about taking over everything. <laughs> this is DC. DC is really serious about taking over everything. <laughs> I mean, why not? But why wouldn't DC just use Superman then? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they don't want to muddy the waters. I feel like they're just like, this might be a hair more than we want to get our main books involved with. Fair. And the, the Vertigo line is more meant for that kind of oddball stuff anyway. So, so when the when the inevitable religious hate comes out at it. I, mean, I guess wait and see for what I'm it is. I'm hoping Jesus is jacked in this. Historians think that Jesus was like, he was well built because he like carpenters were also stonemasons back in the biblical times. So it was very possible that Jesus was yoked, dude. I mean, he had to walk everywhere, so he was definitely spelt. Oh, yeah, they were all in shape. There were not very many fat people. Probably short because it was a few thousand years ago. Well, not that short. I mean, shorter than the average person. Yes. Well, today's the, average person. Yeah, definitely not. He could have been Im- tall for, for the day. But still not an imposing height by today's standards. No, but I mean, I don't think the Son of God has to be that tall to be imposing. I mean, Tom Cruise does it all the time. Yeah. I mean, if Jesus were Tom Cruise's height and he walked in the room, I would be very, I'd be very, very much imposed upon. <laughs> 
I don't think that's the right way to say that. I'd be very much intimidated. He would be very imposing. I think I would still have the reaction of kind of short. Yeah, well, you know what? That's your eternal soul on the line there. <laughs> if your initial reaction to the Savior walking is like, mm, shorter than I thought, I would have been like, Jesus is jacked. But yeah, so second coming. I don't know. I feel like I should have a funny tagline, like something about like coming soon, but I'm not getting there. Whatever. Yeah. They can do it for themselves. Rapture, I don't know. Couple of things are ending soonish. Just gonna knock them out. Exiles. Too bad. I liked that book. That's ending at number twelve. But that seems to be, especially in Marvel, like if you're not hitting like sales numbers out of the park, like yeah. you, you get six and if or twelve. Like after that, like they're, they're not investing in anything extra. It's cutthroat. They didn't really give books the chance to thrive business wise. I don't know. Feel about it how you will. Twelve books is kind of a really short run. Yeah, it's it's a double edged sword because you get people saying like, oh, you didn't give this book a chance. But then when you look at the numbers, number ones sell the best. So just keep on pumping out those number ones. They consistently have better numbers. Usually it's like a 50% drop off by number two for most things. But if then you have everything kind of plateauing after that, then yeah. Well, usually aren't like pilots are usually the highest, some of the highest rated shows in a run of a TV series. Yeah, usually. Because there's idea. the curiosity factor, like pilots and season finales. I mean, books used to like just run and run and run no matter what. Like they get canned occasionally, but you'd have books like in the 300s, the 600s. And now it's like 12, maybe. And shorter arcs. I mean, that's now everything has back in the day that people just write stuff like it didn't really matter because it wasn't getting collected. And now everything has to have a five or six issue arc so it can get collected in a trade. So it make, makes sense for them to print a trade. Yeah, which is annoying because sometimes you don't need five or six issues. <laughs> some people can do it well. Some people follow well, their face. Just like sometimes you don't need 13 episodes for a TV series. Yeah. Green that's Arrow. Like, talking that, to you, Iron Fist. That's ending at number 50. And I don't have a number for this one, but Paper Girls is going to end in 2019. It's uh, one of Brian K. Vaughn's books. And this will be one that's ending because he's like, well, the story's told. He's one of those guys. He He's popular enough and renowned enough. He just kind of does what he wants. That's such a cool name. I always think I acknowledge it. Like, Brian K. Vaughn. But you could throw a middle initial in anything. Zach A. Bowen. Doesn't really have the same ring. No, it's not great. You need, like, you need one of those hard consonant vowels. Or, like... Well, not always. Like I think I have enough consonants. Zach C. Bowen is much more than Zach A. Bowen. A. Zach A. Bowen. It's real Jersey of me. Yeah. Jared S. Richmond doesn't really... Yeah. Don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. But like Jared R. Richmond, maybe. J.R. Richmond. See, that'd be better. I think that's... that's J.S. <laughs> Richmond doesn't really work. There wasn't much in the way of news this week because, you know, holidays. So from there, we'll go on from... Stop hitting things. Sorry. From pop culture to deflated footballs, let's go into sports reports. Please shut your damn mouth. I was trying to think of things that pop, and that's the first thing that came to my mind. <sighs> sports reports, theme. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. Bear tested. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40-yard line. It's time for another Jared Sports Report. That's such a terrible, that's that's a bad segue, especially in this region of the country. <laughs> you know exactly what you were doing. Uh, let's see, the New England Patriots, uh, again, I think, was it seven or nine? There was like a it's in, it's nine straight division, no, ten straight division titles. We knew about that, but they also, I think it's seven straight buys. It's an NFL record. Uh, they're the number two seed, uh, and they'll play the the lowest, the highest remaining seed left after the first round uh, in the playoffs. So they're just one win away from an eighth straight and uh, AFC title game, and so they're just two wins away from being back in the Super Bowl. And your, Crazy. Your prediction at the beginning of the season was Patriots Saints. Yeah, you and, before I did. Yeah, I was trying to remember the name of New Orleans. Like, what the hell are they? Oh yeah, Saints. So that's still very much a possibility. I don't know. It'd be cool to be right. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, we'll af see. after this, the Patriots don't sound like they're going to be the same team. After no, this well, they're, year. they're still not the same team that they were last year. I feel like that was, last year was a missed opportunity. I mean, this team's still, it's possible, but they're really still very much flawed. But all of the teams that they lost to this season didn't make the playoffs. So that's kind of an interesting anecdote about this year's Patriots squad. They try hard when it matters. Uh, I think there's something to that, maybe, perhaps. But 11 and 5 for the. Uh, the final season record tally to go uh, as the number two seed. So they won't be playing this coming weekend. Lots of good wild card action. All the college bowls are going on. Uh, I'm going to, when I leave here, I'm going to go watch the uh, end of the Rose Bowl here on New Year's Day. That's always exciting. Uh, the Celtics continue to do well. I didn't see the final score from today's Winter Classic. The Bruins are playing in the Winter's Classic. I will look it up. 
in fact. Yeah, Celtics are up and down. Yeah, well. They're short two bigs when they only have four right now. That's not great. No, it's not not great. Uh, the Boston Bruins beat Chicago 4-2 in the Winter Classic that was played at Notre Dame Stadium, the outdoor hockey game that they play every New Year's. So good job by the Boston Bruins as they continue to have a pretty good season uh, as they kind of skate under the radar, if you would. I don't approve of that. That pun? No. You forced it. The Bruins dressed up as, um, because it was taking place at the University of Notre Dame, they dressed up like characters from like Peaky Binders, like like Italian mobsters. I've never seen that show. It's not a bad show. I've seen like a couple episodes, but they're all wearing like um, like newsy caps, oh, yeah. vests, ties. I've heard it's good, but that also means nothing to me. <laughs> There's plenty of good things out there that I'll just never get to. Yeah. So that's really it for sports reports here. We're just kind of in the doldrums of winter. We're just kind of grinding away. And by so many people's metrics, basketball just started. It's true. Basketball just started. Or it's a good chunk of the way through the season. Depends on how you look at it. All right, I guess from there, it is time for our annual tradition of going through the past year, looking at what works, looking at the duds, probably more the positive stuff and other random things. It is the 2018 year in review, best of, worst of, all around things we saw. Let's do it! I'm the best there is at what I do. But what I do best isn't very nice. It's time for an Editor's Note podcast review. All right, before we kind of dig into a lot of this, I'm just going to knock one category out because you have nothing to contribute. Okay. Best comics of the year. All right. Is it a top 10? It was a top 11. I threw it up on Twitter. All right. Number 11. Oh, in no particular order. Oh. So this doesn't really count as a countdown because I just wrote down ones I liked. Number 11. (laughs) In in no order. All right, fine. The Immortal Hulk. The Hulk I've been kind of stagnated on for a while. There's some flashes of good in there, but I haven't really been into the character since like the end of World War Hulk, and that was 10 years ago. But Immortal Hulk is this weird return to form. It's a weird horror book that Marvel's putting out. Every time um, Bruce Banner dies, that's the only way he can become the Hulk, and it's just this mean, nasty Hulk who's real vengeful and crappy. Well, wouldn't you be vengeful and crappy if you just died? It's the only way he can come out. Bruce has to die. And it happens in weird, crazy ways, and he can't be killed. So, like, they cut him up into pieces, like, put him, like, all of his different parts into jars and stuff. And then he went to hell. It's just, it's just a cool book. I like it a lot. There seems to be a lot going on. Probably talk the most about that than any other one. Doomsday Clock. I like it. The Watchmen sequel. I wish it came out more frequently, but when it's done, it's done. I'll be able to read it all because I kind of forget sometimes what's happening in between issues. But hey, still solid. Mr. Miracle, that wrapped up recently. 12 issue run. Fantastic. As long as you like some existentialism in your books, you'll probably like it. Batman, just the regular Batman title. It's solid. You can pick up each individual arc, but it's also definitely a big interweaving connected story. Just solid. Thanos, uh, specifically Thanos wins, where Thanos goes into the future fi- and has to fight with an older version of himself, a Mjolnir wielding silver surfer, a cosmic ghost rider who's insane, a Hulk that eats things. It's fun. Good book. Fantastic Four. It's back. It's good. It's it, I don't know, it hasn't been out for a ton yet, but I've really been enjoying the run. Mighty Thor slash Thor switching over from Jane Foster, not dying from cancer to going back to regular old recipe Thor. That's another one. There's a story that's been building for like five years that, you know, we'll see where it goes. X-Men Red. The book is done because X-Men relaunched and... Well, screw it. I was, I was going to try and not say bad things about current ongoing ones. Look, it's not good. I have not enjoyed the X-Men relaunch at all. No. I mean, please buy it. <laughs> but because you don't like it doesn't mean other people might not like it. I mean, I'm looking forward to what they're going to do in their second arc. This, this first yeah. one has just... Ooh, well, again, you don't have to like what you like. No. Saga, still solid. They're taking like at least a year-long break, which is a bummer because... They did a lot of big stuff right at the end. The book is, it's like the Game of Thrones of comics. Like, you never know, like, when a big character is going to go. It happens pretty regularly. But one, one, when you're like, okay, we're safe for a little while. Nope, next issue, massive, another one. Like, gee, this is not following convention at all. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> dying. Yeah, they're just killing everyone. Kill, die, kill. Uh, the Firefly book that's back, I've been enjoying that. It's only two issues in. If you want to hear issue by issue reviews, Patreon, baby. Plug, plug, plug. One dollar a month or more. And one more for me. Um, probably couldn't help myself on this uh buffy season 12 wrapped up really well when disney bought fox all the fox properties got snatched up too and they were told you have four issues if you want to wrap things up and damn it if they didn't do a good job with a really limited amount of time snap snap yeah basically it was like you can still finish it like okay good like so we'll do this this is like you have four issues like ah we'll get on that then 
Well, <laughs> watch us. Watch me whip. Watch me nay nay. In some other duds this year. Not, I mean, I have not been enjoying the X Men. I am looking forward to the second arc, like I said. So who knows? I'm inconsistent. But Avengers No Surrender. That was a, like a ten part weekly series. You know what I remember from that? It ended. Not a damn thing. I don't even remember the premise. Wow, that's not good. And I read every bit of it. Hmm. Which, you know, that really speaks to its quality. All right. Uh, Please buy its follow-up weekly series coming out hmm, next month. I didn't order a lot of it. So if you want it, you gotta jump on it because I'm not expecting it to sell well. Get there early. There have been some other duds, but they're mostly ongoing things, so I don't want to crap on ongoing stuff too much. Fair enough. You want people to come in and buy it? Yeah. Find out for themselves. Well, I am I think people appreciate it when I do it, but sometimes people are like, oh, how is this? And I really hate it when they pick up crap. I'm like, ah, not good. I didn't like it, but you might like it. Get or cool. try this instead. Come closer to the mic. Try this instead. Now, now I can hear you. Oh, I wasn't that far away. I just wasn't yelling into it. That was just a quick comics bit because you haven't read any new comics, so it's hard for you to contribute to that list. But from there, we're going to go on, and we need to come to a consensus with all of these. Oh boy, here not, we go. Not really, I don't care. Good. Way to stand your ground. For movies or television shows that we saw this year, what is the thing that you forgot you even watched? It was Ready Player One. <laughs> That's my answer, too. It's definitely Ready Player One. I was looking one. at the list of movies, and I said, oh, Ready Player One was this year? Oh, wow. I, know, I totally forgot I watched that. Yeah. I remember all the other ones I watched. Yeah, I don't think I have that down for anything else. I didn't really hate Ready Player One. I just didn't really remember a whole lot of it. This doesn't just include like the stuff we talked about on the show. I'm counting all the movies from 2018 that we saw. Look, we didn't see that much, it turns out. <laughs> no, I only saw nine <laughs> movies that came out this year. So you'll have some repeat answers. But yeah, boy, Ready Player One's forgettable. Yeah, I mean, it was it was fun in the moment. There was a lot. It was sensory overload. There was a lot in it. But somehow nothing. I don't know if I'd want to like... It's just like, there's a reference, there's a reference, there's a reference, there's a reference. I don't know if like going back, like thinking about like if I had to watch any one of these nine movies again, it would it would probably be one of the last ones I would watch again. Yeah, I'm not going to revisit this. No. Or even this, also a movie that, because it was done differently in the book, a movie that also doesn't understand video game culture. Like if you go online for anything, like everyone has found every single Easter egg in any single video game within like a day and you can find these insane breakdowns and all these crazy things. You're telling me that in the five years that this game has been going on, no one thought reverse. Yeah. No, no, no way in hell. No, no, even somebody accidentally hit the wrong button and goes backwards. Yeah, no, there's no way, no way that no one, because I mean, people will go over every inch of every single thing. It's no true. way no one just thought what about the other way it's back there everyone looks for secret hidden areas in video games especially people like that who are supposed to be like ultra obsessive oh yeah like they're trying to like no way in hell what a boring movie like oh no that girl... no no it wasn't boring it was formula it was formula formulatic formula formulaic yeah that word right there you're having trouble with words tonight i am it's, my new year's resolution is to sound like a bumbling idiot <laughs> like oh no that girl she's so scarred and hideous ah how can anyone look at her like oh no she's just really attractive and in shape and has a slight discoloration Mm. shucks how could anyone find her attractive i mean i thought it was extremely convenient that all the characters live within five square miles of each other that was different in the book too yeah they were like spread out all over the world weren't they yeah yeah not that they were all conveniently close to each other (laughs) yeah you didn't have to go that far turns out yeah uh so yeah award for movie you forgot you saw ready player one this one might be a tough one for you because okay. i don't think you saw anything that falls into this category all right best original movie not an adaptation not a sequel nope don't got anything <laughs> didn't see one and you're what's wrong with the culture yeah whatever i would put two options down there and i definitely lean more one towards another but at least list them out won't you be my neighbor that's kind of like an adaptation it's not a it's a documentary oh oh you're oh well, then I have one. Okay. The Andre the Giant documentary that they had on HBO. <laughs> it counts. Yeah. Did that, I mean, this guy, yeah, I sure. Why not? I mean, it was released, but yeah. Yeah, the Fred Rogers documentary. That was really good. I want to see it. It's solid. I liked it a lot. I like Fred Rogers. It wasn't like tear jerking or anything like that. It was just really solid. You learn a lot. I mean, yeah, very interesting man. No one else in the world like him. I thought that the the Andre the Giant one was like, you want to talk about interesting man that there was nobody like him. All the stories about Andre the Giant and like the thing, like he was larger than life in multiple ways. Like the amount of, what was it? Um, there's a scene with him, like they're talking with Ric Flair about like Andre's ability to drink. And he goes, brother, me, one night me and Andre drank 136 beers, mm. 136, of which Andre probably drank 100. Yeah. But the winner for me, and I guess for you by default, best original movie of the year, 
Searching. It was the John Cho movie that was shot entirely with what would be like real life cameras. There's a lot of FaceTime. Thank oh. God that man likes FaceTime. What about no the, Super Troopers Two? That's not. It's a sequel. Oh, okay. We're getting there. We're getting to sequels. Uh, okay. But yeah, if you uh, you're staring at me like you didn't even were aware of what Searching was. Nope. It was this um this dad's daughter goes missing and then he kind of starts going through her digital life and finding out that like it, it might not be the girl that he knew and the whole movie is shot with like real life cameras like it's a news crew or it's facetime like thank god he uses facetime a lot stuff like that mm-hmm. or at one point like they set up like spy cameras and you know video blogs and things of that nature it was <laughs> get out wasn't this past year or was it the year before the year before oh it all blends together when you get to be this age not that old 34 <laughs> gonna be 35 this year I can but say I mean, that now. It's 2019. It's a. Th- I mean, it's a thriller. And what I really like about this movie is you kind of eventually you get used to like there's going to be okay there's another twist yeah I get it. there's going to be another twist. This is one of the smartest. This is actually probably the smartest movie I saw this year. Really? I love it. What well, it gives you just enough information that you can figure it out, but they do it so organically and so subtly. And this movie outsmarted me, and I love that. I love that feeling when you can just be outsmarted by a movie. And I'll go like, it was that all along. Knew it. What about Dunkirk? That, that was, was last, last year. year. Two years ago now. But yeah, Searching was a huge shock for me. I was like, yeah, I've heard it's good, but I thought it was going to be kind of gimmicky. No. One of my favorite movies of the year. Very cool. And I'm also very sad that I can never rewatch it, because you'll never have that magic of the first time. Of just seeing have everything falling it's like into place. When the, when the twist happens, I mean, there's about that's the only downside of the movie is there's about another twist every ten minutes, and you start to just get like, yeah, okay, this isn't going to really like be an M Night Shyamalan movie. No, because that just has a twist that you could never see coming in any reasonable form. Mm. Usually, I mean, sometimes like Sixth Sense was done well. Ah, that's not. I mean, if you think about that movie for five minutes, it doesn't make any sense. You're telling me that that guy didn't for an entire year, not one person spoke to him, and he couldn't figure that out. What about the water everywhere in signs? No. Have you ever seen the movie, um, was it Fallen? It was Fallen with Denzel Washington. No. That's got a great twist. But yes, yeah, Searching is highly, so so insanely good. So I would, I wish I could recapture just having it all come together all at once. It's such a smart movie. Really great. And your best movie is The Hunter of the Giant one. Yeah. There we go. good. I enjoyed it. Worst movie of the year. Andre the Giant Doc. Oh, shush. Yeah. Worst movie of the year? See, I didn't see as many as you did. I liked all the movies I saw. So my list is kind of... So I guess Ready Player One in your world. That's not the worst movie. I'm I'm gonna say I don't have a worst or, movie. Or either. Solo. <laughs> mm, I would probably watch Ready Player One again over Solo. Maybe I don't know. Solo was pretty good too. I have a definite. There's a couple that I watched. I'm like that wasn't great. Like I watched Venom. Not great. Watched The Predator. Not great. But what stands out head and shoulders above every other movie I saw? Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Wow awful what a terrible movie and I, i've already talked about it on the show it's like there's a clone subplot that goes nowhere where they just have a little girl there's a weird betrayal that doesn't need to happen the only reason it happens is because villains or my favorite one which <laughs> no i've said it before they train a dinosaur to go hunt and kill things for you but in order to do it you need to take a gun and point it at the thing you want to die and then when you pull the trigger the dinosaur will go at the exact thing you pointed at it can't be in the vicinity it has to be exactly where you point the gun it seems really just used a gun at that point yeah unless you, know, you don't a need name. a dinosaur Dude, yeah who also how are you going to round them up at that point oh, so far all you have is a one-shot dinosaur most guns will, you know, make it one shot, but you at least be able to reload. Can you reload the dinosaur? No. No, it's an awful movie. The action is terrible. It breaks physics in weird ways. Like, Chris Pratt gets eaten up by volcanic ash, which would burn him to a crisp instantly. Yeah, he would vaporize. Yeah. Yeah. Things. It's it's just a bad movie, top to bottom. But I'm sure he survives. Oh, yeah. He's fine. He's Star-Lord. I mean, at one point, he almost touches lava, not just the ash. Doesn't burn him. Not the heat coming off of it. If anything, it's just a funny little gag. We can kind of get close to lava. I mean, we're talking like millimeters. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the exposed lava, no. But like the lava that's kind of crusted over, but it's still yeah, no, hot underneath. Yeah, exposed flowing lava. Oh, that's no, no. Yeah. No, it's not a good movie. Well, Frodo got close to it. Frodo and Sam. That rock would have been pretty hot. Yeah, I'm sure it would have been. It would have probably started to melt underneath them. The Jurassic, I hated that movie. And I don't really like any of the jurassic park movies except for the first one the very first one yeah that movie that was good uh yes it was that's not the one that... jurassic park 2 is alan no that's three. Oh, it's three that's right dress Jurassic... that's spielberg did the sequel which is weird and bad there's jeff goldblum's daughter who like, 
kicks velociraptors with her gymnastic skills. Good for her. There's one good scene with like two T Rexes pushing a bus over a mountaintop. That's a good sequence. But beyond yeah. that, no. The first must go faster. Must go faster. Yeah, that's the one. Clever girl. <laughs> I mean, you keep saying lines. Shoot her. <laughs> that was a good one. Ah, what a piece of crap movie. The Pirates of the Caribbean breaks down, John. The pirates don't eat the passengers. Okay, best sequel. Ooh. Ooh. That's tough. That is tough. Ugh. I'm going to go Creed 2. I would also answer Creed 2 because our other ones would be like, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention in original movies. A Quiet Place was really good, but not as good as Searching. Sorry, I just saw it on my list. How, I was going to say, how was that? That's the, like the one where Solid. the the, anim, like the the monster is attracted to the sound and like they have to be quiet in everything they do. Yeah. I'm sure it was very, it probably would have been better in the theater. Like that probably be more visceral. I mean, if you just watch it at night, turn the lights off. Surround sound. There's not that much sound in that movie. Oh. It's important, but no, yeah, it's a solid movie. But yeah, I mean, what do we got? Avengers Infinity War, which I don't really look at as a sequel yeah. at this point. It's more serialized storytelling. Deadpool 2, which is fine. Solo, which is fine. Ocean's 8, again, I'm just going to keep saying it's fine. So many movies this year were just fine. Incredibles 2, fine. Super Troopers 2 was good, but it wasn't like, it wasn't as like, Creed, like, to me, f- finished a story arc. Super Troopers 2 was kind of a novelty item, and Deadpool 2 kind of feels feels like the middle piece in a Deadpool trilogy. It's probably the last, though. I know, but still, at the time. Yeah, and Creed 2 feels like a legit sequel. Like, it takes elements from two different movies and moves forward with them and wraps up it, a ton of stuff. I yeah. Mean, it's a true, honest-to-God sequel, and it's a good movie. It's a really good movie. It's probably it's it's on my short list of movie of the year. It's solid as all hell. Creed 2 is the winner of Best Sequel. Thing That Killed Its Own Franchise is our next award. Ooh. Uh, Disney streaming service that killed all the Netflix shows. I don't know if it's their fault. <laughs> Iron Fist probably wasn't coming back anyway. R.I.P. Daredevil and Luke Cage. Yeah. Ooh. Thing That Killed Its Own Franchise? I'm going to say, eh, having not really watched it, I'm going to say the oversaturation of Marvel TV shows. Yeah, there's a lot out there. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. Except that's not true. Four of them are gone now. Or five if you count the Punisher. Or six yeah, if you count the Yeah, they're gone now. Gone, gone. Yeah, that's what I would, I'd lean with. Too much oversaturation. And I feel like the independent Star Wars, like the Star Wars yeah, so- stories, Solo kill- those are starting to become cumbersome. Solo definitely killed its own franchise. We've never seen another one of those. No. Even though there's like an interesting story point near the end. Like, I want to know more about Darth Maul, but won't ever. I'll get ready to read some comics or watch it on an animated yeah. TV show, because I'm sure that's the only way, because you're never seeing one of those again. Nope. So that's a runner up for almost killed its own franchise. But there is one movie, and I'm going to spoil the hell out of it. Yes. One movie that massacred its own franchise. Well, this is all last year anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. It's, it's, you're never seeing one, at least not a direct follow up to this. The Predator. Oh, was that bad? Uh, it's not as bad as people like to say it is. It's a movie that reeks of studio notes. It's tonally all over the place. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's just kind of average. And it's really inconsistent with like what happens to the Predators. Like Sometimes they're bulletproof and sometimes they aren't. Why? I don't know. When it's convenient. They've adapted like the Borg. Uh, they use Tourette's as an ongoing punchline in a relatively offensive way. That's not funny. Um, autism is a superpower in this movie. Okay. Not just the the kid with autism saves everything, and they have a really terrible portrayal of autism, but the Predators, the reason they've been coming to Earth and like pulling out everybody's skulls is because they're take all this time they've been taking DNA and putting it into themselves and adapting themselves, and they really want to get this kid's autism to make themselves better. That's real weird. Yeah, it's not great. Couldn't they just <laughs> ask for some blood samples? No, they have to predator you. Could they like predator outside a blood bank? They had to take out your skull and take your autism. Obviously. That's just not, that's not cool. And there's this weird shoehorned like message in there. It's like, the, oh, they showed up in like um, 1987 and they showed up in 1997, which is even funny because I didn't notice a continuity error in there. It was like Predator 2 came out in 1990, but took place in 97. And they're watching some footage from Predator 2 and it says 1990. I'm like, ha ha, someone didn't catch that. Wah, wah. But they say that the predators are becoming to the earth more frequently because we're really disturbing the earth with global warming and they're not going to have samples for very much longer. You know, they might not be wrong. <laughs> really shoehorning a message in there that you never return to. But then the reason, aside from all those, like it's not actually that, it's not that great of a movie. Mm. It's not as terrible as people say it is, but it's not like offensively bad until like the last three minutes. <laughs> 
because they kill the predators. Surprise, spoilers. All the predators are dead. There are only two of them. Oh, they take which was even ruined in the trailer. Like there's this one predator. There's a, there's a really cool sequence of like a predator escaping a lab and he's just killing everyone. Good for the predator. Or there's this one great gag where he escapes like a military convoy and he kills everyone at the back. And the driver's like, "Hey, is everything okay?" And he takes someone's severed arm, makes it give a thumbs up, and he just passes up the arm to the driver. <laughs> <laughs> which that's, was a good gag that's funny good for the predators like he apparently took the dna of cool people <laughs> it's like, hey, like arnold going down to the lava except it's just a severed yeah. arm uh, and then he kills the driver i'm sure i don't even remember what happens no. to the driver but the he probably of, lives that's just the gag the end of the movie you know they've killed everything and the people that were on the run from the government are now heroes and they're brought in to see this thing that was left over by one of the predators and they don't know what it is but like it's a predator hunter or a predator killer or something stupid like that and this one random scientist touches it and this gigantic armor looks exactly like the predator jumps on him except instead of having like one of the like shoulder cannons it's just like four massive rifles spinning around he has all these crazy blades on his armor and it's just like whoever thought of this doesn't understand the franchise and what makes it interesting yeah and then the hero of this movie who's really boring boyd kirkland i think his name is he was the uh, one of the villains in logan which i liked him in but he's like like what is it he just goes that's my new suit hope they have it in a 42 long like oh they're never making one of these again no no (laughs) i love movies that have that at the end they're like there's another one coming no there's not no it's done done (laughs) might have been autism is a superpower that did you in Eh. or maybe that they hired a sex offender to be in this movie Eh. and then they got called out for it yeah do you remember that Mm -hmm. yeah so the predator the predator wins and I guess Solo was a runner-up, the movie that killed its go. own franchise. Go watch Predators. Not enough people saw that. It got terrible reviews, but I love that movie. There you go. Great movie. This movie it was also boring. I mean, Predator Two is a bad movie, but it's a fun bad movie. Yeah, I think I could, it's okay to be a bad movie. Hard to get to why it's a bad movie, but it's a fun movie. <laughs> I can sit down and watch Predator 2 any day of the week, and it's it's a terrible movie, but I'll at least have a good time. Yeah. Like Gary Busey be insane, Donald Glover just... That's any Gary Busey movie, though. Away around. Although, if, like, good Gary Busey, though, like some of the best Gary Busey, Under Siege with Steven Seagal. Can't say I ever saw it. What? Why would I see that? Why not? Fair. That's a great movie. The Predator is terrible. Don't watch The Predator. It's Keep boring. Keep the faith, Stranix. Come on, you need to watch... You need to... Before next week, you need to watch Under Siege. Uh, Find some time and watch Under Siege. That won't happen. All right. Next time I host the show, we're going to do it on Under Siege. <laughs> My favorite award of the year. Yeah. Last year, it went to Ben Affleck in Justice League. Worst wig. Worst wig? Mm. runner up woody harrelson and solo winner woody harrelson and venom that's the worst wig i've ever seen uh i'm trying to think the wigs and super troopers were kind of but they weren't bad yeah i'm gonna have to go with you with woody harrelson and um because you showed me the picture and i said wow that's terrible and i never saw venom so i'm gonna go with you on this one because it was at the end too like the post credit scene you showed me the picture and i go oh my god yeah i'm not it's I like Jerry curls. It, it just doesn't look like it belongs anywhere near his head. It, no, it like looks he got, so fake. It's like he got a perm. You remember Ben Affleck's like Widow's Peak, or like his hairline shifted from side to side, and all this other weird stuff last year in Justice League. But man, it's gonna be hard to ever top this category. Might have to get retired because Woody Harrelson's wig in Venom might be the worst wig I've ever seen in a movie. Venom's also pretty boring. Would you say that was worse than the bald cap that um, Jesse Eisenberg wore in at the end of Justice League? I hate that movie. The movie broke me in ways I haven't come back from. Oh, uh, well, it's still your worst movie. <laughs> Next award in the Eddies. Thing the Internet Needs to Shut Up About Award. Oh, okay. Well, that's a lot, actually. I have three categ- I have three possible options. Feel right. free to, if you want to come right, up with any. Go, go to your three options, and as I, I, can, I contemplate. Oh, uh, shoot. What was number three? <laughs> number one and we contributed to this is die hard a christmas movie you know what i don't care anymore i don't even want to watch die hard anymore oh come on it's i'm so that's all i think about when i see that movie and i'm so sick of it and it's so annoying the internet has ruined die hard i left me. here on christmas and you know what i did watch die hard too Damn. no i just watched die hard I, I have no interest in die hard anymore none because of this yeah that's dumb it's it's just it's dead to me you need to watch it i've watched die hard how many times I don't know, five, six, it, enough. I, I don't know. Okay, fine, whatever. It's not bringing anything new to the table for me. It's still a good movie. But the internet has killed it. It's a it. very good movie. Oh, I remember what number three was, and now I think that's... It's the, it was the first of the genre of like one versus everyone. 
I don't think that's true, but <laughs> well, like in that style, you got your your action hero going to town on like he's the, the all on his man. own. Yeah, the everyman. Not by four. Come out like, to the coast. Have a few laughs. It was terrible. Uh, Comicsgate in general. I'm sick of hearing about it. I'm sick of the people engaged in it. Shut up. And for me, my number one thing, because this is mostly a 2017 or whatever year it was, 2018, The Last Jedi. Mm. Shut the hell up. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that. Like, let it go. It's, it's polarizing, apparently. I'm fine with it. I like the movie. I thought it was a good movie. It turned all of what you thought you knew about Star Wars on its head. The Canto Bite stuff's super boring, but beyond that, I pretty much like it. That was like the most George Lucasy feeling stuff, though, in the whole thing. It was like this... It was this trilogy's pod race. It was weird that fuel became a thing in the Star Wars universe. That's never been brought up before. No, it hasn't. We had a really slow change. Yeah, where do they re- where do they refuel? Is there like a, a a sick go on the side of the intergalactic highway? I mean, we talk about we we learn about that Shut in the, Solo. It's but... just a movie. It's fine. Yeah. Shut up. It doesn't matter. None of the stuff matters. No. You know what I want? They have at least they haven't killed that movie for me yet. Like they've killed Die Hard for me. You know what the internet can shut up about? All right, it ready. can shut up about all its theories about all these movies and like taking little inanimate things and turning them into big like conspiracy. Like every week you find out like new theories about movies. It's like let it go. Or, or the stuff it's the weird nitpicky stuff. It's like this is why Home Alone wouldn't work as a movie or like in real life. I'm like no, it's, it's a kids movie. Shut the a, hell up. It's a movie. It's a movie. I've now I had this argument with somebody over Christmas. Like Kevin McAllister leaves the doors unlocked for a very specific purpose. He's a sociopath and he wants to draw the people into the house. No, it's just a movie. It's fine. This I've retitled this one. Shut the hell up. Okay. It's no longer the internet needs to shut up about. It's now shut the hell up. I'm gonna say the internet needs to shut the hell up about Comicsgate. I already said that one. Yeah, but that's like the winner for me. Yeah. Uh, don't be awful. If you don't like a thing, that's fine. Here's the thing. And if you want to voice your displeasure with something, that's fine. But voice it and then... I don't even know. Like, if you're tagging people and just yelling at them, shut the hell up. Yeah. It's weird that you just want to put negativity out into the world. I saw this thing uh, last week. There was a comics creator, and he probably shouldn't have done it just because why bother? Whenever people send me weird negative stuff, I just never respond. I'm like, this will do nothing. But someone was having a back and forth with someone who didn't like their comics run. And this person went off on... It was Donnie Cates and Venom. I don't know why I'm being coy. But this person like was sending him all these tweets. And then he like, sent a response. She's like, oh, wouldn't even let me get my point across. Real rude, Cates. And she had sent like three entire like 280 long like character me- messages. Characters, yeah. tweets. I'm like, if you can get your point out by that point, shut the hell up. That's like almost a thousand words. <laughs> yeah, shut up. Characters. Uh, that's uh, also in general, like, the internet. Stop being negative. I say as I scream at people. Yeah. Shut the hell up. All right. Best villain of the year. Best villain of the year? Ooh. Hmm. We got Ben Mendelsohn in Ready Player One. We got Killmonger in Black Panther. Thanos. The Juggernaut in Deadpool 2. Um, whatever the hell happened in Solo. I guess life in Christopher Robin. Life was the enemy. Yep. You've got, um, we've got Ivan and Victor Drago in Creed 2. Man, I'm torn. Uh, Kingpin in Into the Spider-Verse. Uh kingpin uh i've listed all of these i'm gonna it's a toss-up between the dragos and thanos for me well it's weird that killmonger was up there but it's weird that you're so wrong because there's only one correct answer ulysses claw in black panther (laughs) i love andy circuits he has so much fun in every scene but like he has a mixtape he just likes to sing at you he's okay (laughs) Do you have to He'll define sh- like best villain? Like, are you I don't talking care. About- he shoots a casino up and he just laughs. He's like, "I made it rain!" <laughs> in his weird South African accent. He was fun in that movie. He's just what is love, baby? No. It's so good. He's yeah, but he's not the I'm true s- villain in that. He's still a villain in the movie. He gets his ass killed in that by Killmonger. Sad. I wish he didn't die because, damn it, he was fun. He was definitely my favorite villain of the year. Claw. So like it's okay. There's a difference between else. there's a difference between favorite villain and best villain. I don't care. I, I chose Claw. I say he's the best. Okay, he's my best favorite. I kind of like the vil- Like I like the Dragos in Creed too, just because they have like real motivation and real purpose, and they're real sympathetic characters at the same time. Like they're not like traditional villains. You you're supposed to not like them because of who they are, but you can understand and sympathize with them a little bit. So they're almost like anti-villains, which is kind of a neat take on it. 
Because you yeah, and Drago's actually a character now. Compared, yeah, I mean he wasn't before. He was just a comic book supervillain. Like, but they kind of like life. it's interesting because they're kind of like anti villains, and they kind of get a happy ending. So I like that. Also, shout out to Christopher Robin, where the villain is adulthood. Yeah, that's scary. Immaturity. That's deep. No, there were some good villains it's, in movies this year because movie. like you could. You could like buy into their motivations. Killmonger and Black Panther, also a good villain. There was no real villain in Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, it was Ghost and that guy who's trying to steal a building. Yeah, and that tells me how much I really cared about those villains in that movie. Lawrence Fishburne, I guess, wasn't the best. No. Cable and Deadpool too, but he wasn't really a villain, but you thought he was. Yeah, I mean the villain was the juggernaut and a bald guy. I feel like Thanos. How about the children of Thanos? I liked them. They were kind of cool henchmen. Oh, good, interesting visually, but they didn't do anything beyond that. Uh, the Canadian Mounties in Super Troopers Two, <laughs> Rob Lowe. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go though with Thanos. I think Thanos was kind of the badass villain. He killed half of the universe, man, and you, you really kind of bought into his motivations. It was real interesting. I thought he was an interesting character and a good villain, and he won. The villain won. Gotta gotta give him props. He won. Yeah, I almost want to say Killmonger just because he made some good points, and also he really fed into a terrible system of government. Their system is, of government is whoever's the best fighter gets to rule our land. So I feel like every single tribe would just have one guy mm. who spent all of his time training and getting jacked. So whenever they could challenge for the throne, they'd be like, oh, you've been busy leading a country. Well, we've had someone who's just been training nonstop. Also, weight classes don't enter into this world. Yeah, and you weaken the Black Panther by taking away the power of the flower. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a bad system of government that he took advantage of. He's like, oh, I'm just going to get jacked and then I'll be king because I'm jacked. King Killmonger. It's a lengthy name. Yes. <laughs> what a terrible system of government. It's not terrible. I mean, it's very tribal. It's totally like it's king of the hill, like alpha male. That's not unheard of. But do you have to be in the same weight class if you want to rule? Like if you're a welterweight, can you not get like a heavyweight to go up against you? Like, I'm sorry, different weight class. That's a good question. Good point. I haven't really put any thought into the Wakandan system of government and fight classes. I think it's terrible. Terrible government. Well, good thing Wakanda is not a real country. Oh, uh, next award. Best comic book reference or poll. Ooh. Well, there's just so many in Ready Player One. You couldn't really. I liked a lot of the yeah. Mayor Gordy Wilson stuff that was hanging up his posters in the room. That was kind of cool. The best comic book poll or reference. Reference. I'm going to go with Deadpool 2, making fun of the fact that Rob Liefeld can't draw feet. That was my favorite of the year. I really cannot speak to any references. or Although I will say I liked in Into the Spider-Verse all the different styles that they showed of like how comics were, have been drawn and done. Yeah. I kind of liked that. That was kind of a neat way to make that. I also love the... I love the the meme pool in the post credit scheme <laughs> yeah. to the cartoon. That was great. Uh, that was a good one. I like that one for the I'll probably red box that later award. Ooh, okay. Well, there's plenty of movies. It sounds like it's not going to be Jurassic World for me. Probably I know Incredibles too. Annihilation. I'll probably get around to. That's supposed to be pretty good. That Natalie Portman sci fi one mm. didn't catch it. I'll probably red box it later. There's that. Uh, Incredibles two probably for me. It's fine. Yeah. Totally serviceable. Enjoyed it. Probably never watched again. Is there, where was my super suit line in there? I couldn't tell you a single my line. My evening is in danger. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, is, he's fun in it. He's always fun. I Yeah, there's nothing that really stands out like that now. Maybe, would you recommend Christopher Robin? Yeah, I liked it. So if I had to choose between Incredibles 2 or Christopher, Christopher Robin? Robin? Okay, Christopher Robin. Also, you just want to be sad. I don't like, want to be sad. I like a good, I like a good, um, good movie that makes me uh, explore my emotions. Yeah, that one will do it. As I start to hit the midway point of my life and start to look ahead as there there are still more days ahead than behind, but sooner than later that will start to shift. That you know of. Damn. <laughs> Knock on wood. Yeah, I like Christopher Robin a lot. That was a good movie. Mm. The What Surprised You Most This Year Award. In movies? Or whatever, I guess. The the movie that surprised me the most? I'm going to say End of the Spider-Verse. I didn't think it was going to be as exciting and as good as it was. Yeah, that was, I mean, when we saw that first trailer, that's when they kind of hooked me. But I was kind of in that same vein. I'm like, I'm like animated Spider-Man, why do I care? And then they did that trailer. I'm like, oh, I care now. And then, like, the movie backed up what the trailer was selling. Yeah, that's a solid one. I'll, I'll throw Surging in there a second time just because it's pretty good. Liked it a lot. But yeah, those are probably my two of my surprises of the year. Pleasant hmm. surprises. Yeah. And the uh, most overrated movie of the year. Most overrated movie of the year? Probably. 
I kind of want to say, I don't know, there was a, I liked a lot about Deadpool 2, probably Solo. Deadpool 2, I, I want to say, felt overrated. Like, it was a lot of the same stuff. It was very formulaic. Oh, didn't we, um, wasn't the Dark Tower this year or was it the year before? That was last year. It's just all like. That's, uh, that movie makes me sad. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like a lot about Solo, people really kind of pumped Solo up a little bit and the whole Star Wars thing. It kind of just was the first time I felt Star Wars fatigue. So I'm going to go Solo. I'm going to go with Venom. Because somehow that movie almost made a billion dollars, and it's really generic. And the, you also saw how the movie ends in the trailers. It's one of those movies. Oh, nice. That was the whole turd in the wind line. That's how they end the movie. And he bites off a guy's head, and he walks out of a store. Oh, wow. Like a turd in, in the, the wind. wind. Oh, God. What a boring, crappy movie. How did you really feel about it? it Most was... underrated movie of the year. Most underrated movie of the year? I don't know. What do you got? I'm going to say Solo. Really? Thought people crapped on it a bunch. Look, it's not great, but I went into that movie with zero expectations, and I had a good enough time. It was entertaining. It was fun. It wasn't like... But boy, everyone just hates on that movie. I'm like, yeah, it's not good, but when my expectation was I thought it was going to be terrible, and I walked out of it going, had a pretty good time. But the thing about that movie that was hard for me, though, is like the main characters, you never really felt like Han or Chewie were in any danger. Like No matter how dire they tried to make it, I was never like, oh, they're hanging off this this cart full of high explosives on the side of this icy mountain in the middle of this weird planet. They're Gosh, g- what's going to happen? They're going to be okay. Unless they kill Chewbacca and he had a brother all along. Oh. Chewbacca 2. Ooh, Chewbacca 2. Uh, Chewbacca. Chewbacca. So we're we talking about the most underrated movie? I don't know. I kind of liked Ant-Man and Wasp. Yeah, that doesn't get a lot of love. It's solid enough. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, it, it had the unenviable task of following up Avengers Infinity War. So everyone's still coming down on that high, but it was a perfectly serviceable movie. It's also nice just kind of unpacking after that and being like, they do other stuff too mm. in the world. It's not all just like yeah. massive. I guess I didn't have a category to squeeze this one into, but I'm just going to say the Happy Time Murders is a piece of crap. Okay. Didn't fit that one into a category. It's just not a good one. Yeah. Oh, that's the one with the Muppets, right? Yeah, it's not good. Not no. good. Don't worry. Don't Not worth it. If there are any good jokes in there, they're in the trailer. And every other joke is terrible. Isn't who who's the famous person in that one? Uh, Melissa McCarthy. And there's in there like also um Joel McHale is in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Stanley from the office. A lot of people, I think. There wasn't any of the Hemsworths in there, was it? No. No. Okay. Just a bad movie. <laughs> Let's start wrapping this up. Movie or the most or thing, I guess whatever. Excited about for the this coming year. Yes, we know you have Super Bowl hopes. Yes. The thing I'm most excited about for this coming year, movie-wise, I'm really excited for Endgame. Um, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to land. Yeah. I, w- I want to see how they wrap this up and how they set the stage for the next phase of the Marvel Universe. I'm also really excited for Captain Marvel. I'm yeah. kind of curious as to how they like shoehorn that into everything and how they're going to set that up. Maybe Captain Marvel doesn't do sh** in the Avengers movie. She's probably going to save the day. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's probably going to be Iron Man at the end because, you know. He's probably going to die. I think he'll he'll win. He'll be the, the one to do the finishing blow or whatever. Yeah. I mean, mine is definitely Endgame. I'll throw a comic in there as well. The first issue is out this week. I think I, I got to read it a little while ago because just of shipments around the holidays. But the new Conan series that Marvel picked up, Jason Aaron's writing it. I forget who the artist is, but it's solid. I'm really looking forward to that. It's also nice having something different on the mainstream. I'm also really excited for episode nine. Yeah. Wrap up whatever this part of Star Wars yeah. is. 2019 is a big year for wrapping up story arcs, big story arcs. I'm all in on it. But then maybe we can get something new. Mm. Who knows? Yes. And the thing you're least looking forward to, probably should have switched those around. Taxes. I mean, I, I Doing like my it. taxes. I like getting a refund. Raking my lawn that I didn't get raked this winter, or this uh, fall. I'm not looking forward to that. Well, it's worse than that is going to be X-Men Dark Phoenix. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You're going to make me watch that, aren't you? Uh, that's going to be terrible. We didn't do our best, though, like the best movie of the year. We're getting there. Oh, okay. Sorry. We're not done yet. Okay. Well, you're already moving ahead into 2019. Like I know. Okay. I'm trying to go out on a high. Oh, okay. Because this is a downer. All right. This is a low one. X-Men Dark Phoenix is a thing that's happening for some reason. Okay. It's going to be awful. Do you have anything else no. like that? Whenever the next time Universal tries to reboot their monster movie franchise, it's going to be terrible. Well, at least they're trying. And I would go with top whatever of the year. I don't care what it is. Could be a movie. Could be a sport. Could be a, a from, book. From 2018? Yeah. I don't know. 2018 was a good year for coaching for me. I coached two state championship, two state champions in track. That was fun. There were some really solid movies in 2018. Creed two, Infinity War. Those were really good. No, 2018 was just a, it was a solid year. Yeah, I, I'm going to... I, mean, I can't not. It has to be Infinity War. It's this culmination of all this stuff that's like the biggest pop culture thing that's... Going. Like, yeah, and it's so... 
you know, nice seeing it from the kid who was reading this stuff and like no one liked it at all. Now it's like the biggest thing in the world. That movie for me is just me just swinging my middle finger at everyone. Like I was right. Both of them. You're like, yeah, yeah. just what little surround sound for everybody. It was worth it. Assholes. <laughs> all those times <laughs> you picked on me. Guess who else is spending money on it now? Yeah. But, you know, slightly less informed. Not that much, but slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you should be like best part of 2018 for you was the construction ending. Oh, that was the worst part of 2018. Oh, yeah. I bet it was. That hurt. That yeah. hurt financially. Financially hurt. Out the was pain. bad. Yeah. Wasn't good. I got that crap's done. Yep. All right. And those are the Eddies. Congratulations to all of our winners. You get absolutely nothing. <laughs> Especially Happy Time Murders, which just got a shout out for being terrible. Well, and The Predator. Crazy Rich Asians is good, too. Didn't mention that one at all. There we go. That was the last movie I don't think I mentioned that I saw. Okay. Liked it. From there, down to our first of the year, Letters to the Editors. A lot of questions, number one. Damn few answers. Here's another one of your Letters to the Editors. Make it so. Here's an interesting quandary. Yes, a query. Yeah. With Marvel's history of lying to us in trailers, what'd they lie to us about this time? Who else is in the van? There's somebody else in the van. Could be. I think it also, yeah, all that stuff. There, I've seen things online of people who are pointing out, like, like, is this new footage? And then, like, in the upper, like, left-hand corner or something, it'll say, it says, like, archive footage or something, or, like, archive. Yeah. I don't think those two scenes go together, would be my first guess yeah i also i think they're just different conversations i also think that tony's not alone on his ship i mean yeah we know that though yeah there's a shot of nebula's hand on his shoulder and a shot of her in the same ship so i don't think he's alone no but I, they're also doing that um bruce banner's looking at the list of people who are dead or missing yeah and they show Shuri on there as one of the missing people. But earlier, the Russos had come out and said that she wasn't one of the people who were eaten up by the snap. So I feel like that might be a misdirect for the trailer. Also, where's Valkyrie? On a different ship somewhere. Yeah. With Korg. A new Doug. I, mean, I don't think you could put Korg in this next movie. I think he would just be such a tonal shift. Oh, yeah. Like, everything's dour. And you already have Ant-Man, who's like your one silly, like, light Comic relief guy, yeah. yeah. And then Korg shows up, and he's just in another damn dimension of just silly. And everyone's just like... Everyone... I want to feel. I want to have the feels. <laughs> everyone's dead. What are you doing? You weird New Zealand rock pile. I didn't have enough pamphlets. Uh, oh. I, I don't know. Yeah, so we both agree that that thing at the end is probably a lie somehow. Yes. All right, there we are. I'm also sleepy. All right, well, if you like the show, we're back here for 2019. It's like you're signing your checks. I know, I'm going to screw that up for yeah, a while. Yeah, whatever. Please support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash editorsnotecomics. You get this show a whole day early. The Buffy back issue bin. It's kind of done. It's kind of done. It's, but, uh, it's at the end of its former iteration. But get two podcasts a month. They're exclusive to Patreon. Buffy and Firefly reviews issue by issue, non-spoiler and spoiler. Exclusives. Only on the Patreon. It's two a month. Two extra pods a month. Yeah. Woo. Plus, you also get, uh, for $5 a month, uh, a $5 Patreon gift, if you will. You can become a Duke or Duchess of the podcast. Been a while since we've had one of those. I know. Every time you say that, I get a little bit sad. I was like, oh, yeah. Those happen sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, they, they make great Christmas gifts. Oh, wait. Christmas <laughs> is coming. God. Uh, they make great January doldrums of winter gifts. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, you can visit the store two ten Water Street in Hollowell. Uh, you can also find us online by finding us. You can find Zach online. Editorsnotecomics dot com plus all of the social medias, Twitter, Definitely Instagram. Instagram. I use that one a lot. Instagramming. I don't. I never use it for the store. Uh, a while. lot of twitters. Mostly of Twitter. Tweets. I like Twitter the most. Yeah. Anything exciting come up in January for the store? Not really. Not that I can think of. No. Just business as. Still alive. Still survived. Survived the construction. Good job. So have not recovered from the construction, but survived. You have spring paving to look forward to. Son of a bitch. I'm just here to make sure that your year is off to a great start. <sighs> I hate that road construction. Oh, that's almost over. All right. And you're on Twitter. At Junior Rich. If you want to see a man get happy or sad about football. That's true. Well, yeah, hopefully hopefully for, for a while, at least through January into February, that'd be great. <laughs> I was going to say, if it's sad, he probably won't tweet about football that much more. Fair. It'll be like one really sad day and then silence. I'm never going Twitter silent. I'll tweet I'll tweet something just for the sake of it. Ah. When you're watching the Super Bowl with a couple of teams you don't like. Eh, as long as it's a good game. Try to decide who to root for. Yeah, as long as it's a good game. All right, that'll do it for this week. Next week, I don't remember. I haven't looked at my laptop in a few days. Something. Yeah, but we'll be back. Yeah. So get ready for that. Woo. All right, see you later.
Bye.